This week on Business Mike, the business of beauty. My guest today is Susie Wakabi. She's the founder of Susie Beauty, Kenya's first local cosmetics brand. In today's show, Susie shares her inspiration for starting her own cosmetics brand, as well as the key lessons that she's learned as an entrepreneur. All this and more next on Business Mike. You're listening to the Business Mike podcast. Amazing interviews with inspiring entrepreneurs. Subscribe on iTunes and Stitcher Radio for a brand new episode every Monday. For more amazing interviews, go to www.businessmike.com or sign up for our weekly newsletter by simply sending an email to subscribe at businessmike.com. Hello and welcome to another episode of Business Mike. My name is Daudi Mugabe and today I'm joined by Susie. Um, Susie, could you briefly tell us about yourself and what you do? Sure. Uh, my name is Susie Wakabi and I'm the founder and chief creative officer of Susie Beauty, which is actually Kenya's very first makeup brand. Right. And what inspired you to make your own brand? Because the assumption here is that they were ready brands on the market what is it that you wanted to offer that was different from what was already out there so after almost 10 years away in the u.s studying and working and um and honing my craft in in the beauty in this beauty and fashion industries i came back home and i was working in the beauty industry here it was very small there was only very few makeup artists and especially media makeup artists and my point was to try and build the, the industry and, and and grow it to a place where we need to be we can compete on internationally i think we can do that in any industry right so um came home came with a big suitcase full of products uh from all the brands i'd worked with out there and and um you know about you know a year into it or so i'm running out of product and then i started to look for you know where do i buy this where do i where do i replenish my my product from and then i i quickly found that the retail cosmetics space in nairobi was um you know just like not up to par everything all the products that i found were imported uh second of all they were extremely unaffordable for something I was used to buying for twenty, twenty-five dollars in the U.S., I was buying for the equivalent of almost ninety dollars here. So, and I figured I can't be the only one. I can't be the only one looking for this great product that's actually affordable. And so I decided to cr- just make my own. You know, after all the like, oh, I'm waiting to travel. I'm waiting for somebody to send it to me. And this is for my work, apart from just like my personal use. So that's that's what inspired um, Suzy Beauty. Right. And in an industry like yours, whereby people make different brands and cosmetics, what makes one cosmetic brand different from the other? I'm going to ask a very naive question from a man's point of view. No, Um, that's a good question. (laughs) From from my perspective, red lipstick is red lipstick. So what makes one lipstick superior to another? So it's it's many different things. It's uh, the ingredients that are used are really important. Um, the you know non toxic toxicity of a, of a, a product is really important you'll find you know it's even been shown like man, many of the major brands have like you know lead or mercury or like i mean some extinct ingredients in their products that are carcinogenic like they can kill you like they make your your you know your lips fall off your your face break out and all that so what what's what's in the product is really important and then for me Personally, um, I, I thankfully I come from a makeup artistry background, um, so I I've worked with so many different brands, and I know there's something that works in this brand, there's something that doesn't work in the other brand. There's this color, yes, a red lipstick is a red lipstick, but there's a certain staying power, there's a certain um, depth of color, there's a certain shade of color that works better, and whereby I you know I very very quickly found out that Suzy Beauty would be uh, Kenya's first makeup brand because nobody's ever done it before. So I was going to have to import every single raw material, every single machine to create the product. Obviously, the expertise to create the product with me. So you know, a whole nother project. And and for me, it was just like I know what's right and what's wrong. I know how I want this product to be. So if I can find a contract manufacturer somewhere in the world out there to help me create this thing, um, 
and 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 I also I, I so when I was in the U.S. I also have a bit of a product development background, so that was very helpful. I'm not a chemist, so I had to sit with a chemist to cook the things and cook the products and and come up with the right formulas and that type of thing. So yes, there is a difference between um, there's a reason why this you know this product in this brand works better than that product in that brand. Um, and for me, it was to tie it all in to create a product that's really good quality, affordable, very important, and for us, the African woman, that's actually never been done before. So we have a, we have a very special skin texture. Um, you know, a product sits on our skin differently. It really does. <laughs> so just catering to that. The correct, you know, the uh, the color elements have to be right, and and the 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 textures have to sit pr- properly. The staying power, our humidity levels, our climate, like I had to take all that into consideration. Right. Um. Considering what you've just said, different people have different reactions to some of these products. So when yeah. you're developing them, how do you make sure that what you've created is good enough for majority of the people? Like Absolutely. It won't... Yes. And that, that's that's exactly the perfect question because it has to be for the majority. I cannot probably cannot cater to a hundred percent of everybody. Um. I do not claim to have have hyperallergenic products, but all our all the ingredients that we use are um, non-toxic. That's very important. Every single thing is allergy tested. Um, if we have, we, if we have, you know, an eye product, it's it's tested by an ophthalmologist as well. You know, an, an eye doctor. So just to make sure everything is as safe as possible for as many people as possible, with still keeping in touch with all the promises that we've made correct textures, correct color tones, you know, all that, as well as the non-toxicity. One of the things many startup entrepreneurs don't factor in when they're starting a business, especially those that work on the creative side, is that once you start a business, you have to put on so many different hats. What were some of the responsibilities that you had to juggle and take on when you started your business? So for me, coming from a, a very creative background and creative space, and that's where I'm comfortable in the creativity. I'm the visionary, like, you know, and it's, it's, it was very, very uncomfortable for me to, uh, to run a business, pretty much. Um, you know, there's the, there's the you know, at, in our third year since starting, uh, th- thankfully, my husband has a really great operations and, and finance background. So at some point, he just stepped in because we, we, we founded the company together, but he was letting me run with it, right? Um, and at some point, I was trying to do everything and it just wasn't working because I don't know. I don't know the finance. I don't know the operations. I don't know the logistics. Like, how do I know how to import a thing? Like, oh, you know, who do I call? And like... So we did a lot of that together, and then eventually he l- literally like stepped into the business and, and started to to manage that part of the part of it all. Um, so yes, initially I was wearing all the hats, and it's very very important to recognize that it's that's not possible <laughs> to wear all the hats all the time. So I I I was yeah. So it, it was never a, a happy place for me, even as my. Um, my uh, title as CEO was never a happy place for me. So we had some investors in the beginning and they were like, yeah, you have to be the CEO for as long as it takes. I'm like, let's hire a CEO. Let's get somebody who actually knows what they're doing. And they're like, no, you know, you're in charge of the company and you have to run it. So I did, I did it as well as I could for as long as I could. Um, And and now it's a it's a much better place. I don't know if, if that's the time to segue into into the new uh, situation of Suzy Beauty. You can you can let me know. <laughs> Absolutely, I was yeah. just going to bring it up. Your partnership <laughs> with Flame Tree um, that yeah. happened this year. So you're now actually the chief creative officer. I the, finally the... have my dream job seven exactly. years later. Exactly. <laughs> I was just going to ask, what's the difference in terms of a chief creative officer versus a CEO? So basically, I'm in charge of everything creative, which is, so for me, it's product, it's marketing, it's PR, the things that I actually know how to do, the things that I'm actually good at doing. So I have now a stronger backbone behind me, a a, a bigger team. I have people around me that can actually, you know, deal with, deal, deal with all the, 
I, I hate using this word, but it's the best I can come up with is the yucky stuff. So it's like finance <laughs> and the operations and all, all the things my husband used to have to deal with. Um, there's, you know, there's teams of people doing that, stocking product, like, you know, making sure that, you know, everything, all the shops are, are fully um, stocked and that type of thing. Um, so so for, for me, I can get to concentrate on product development, which is what I love. I can do that all day, every day. I can literally sit around playing with makeup colors all day <laughs> and night. The things that, you know, get my blood rushing, the things that make me excited. Um, so that's that's the biggest advantage. So I have I have really you know strong partners beside me. I go we, you know we're called by a, a department store that's opening and they're like okay come Susie Beauty can come and so I I just have to show up and yay or nay the space that they're giving us and then somebody else takes the measurement somebody else calls the the uh, display maker somebody else calls you know the the stockist and. And things just happen. Before, it was me doing everything, including like I would drive my little red car to deliver up the products into, you know, our different stores. But so, so it's just like I can actually now focus on what's important, what's important to grow the brand. Right. And if you could give us a sneak preview behind the scenes, what does it take to create a new product? Like you try and come up with a new lipstick or a new eyeshadow, something new and different. What elements inspire you to create something new and, and what's the process? Okay. So, okay. So I, uh, let me start from the beginning. I, in, the, in, in the very first stage of the, of the project, um, you know, year one, I was developing the brand and the, and the products that will go into this brand. And I developed over 32 products. Obviously, I was super enthusiastic. <laughs> so, but we've, until today, we've only launched 11 different products. So we still have like 21 of the initial development to launch. So I, I still, I just have to keep up with the trends. I just have to make sure that whatever we are introducing into the line makes sense, especially for this market. It's really important to localize a product to the market that you're launching it in. And for me, this is it's the Kenyan market for now. Um, so what do we what do we like? What what do our ladies like? And then launching with fewer products than I than I initially developed was really important because I could test it. And make sure that what I what I thought was right is actually right. What what I thought they would love, they actually love. So I, I mean, there's there's one or two things that we've removed or and we've add, had to add a few colors because there was a, a, a demand that we did, we hadn't anticipated before. So that's a, that's um, my Kenyan woman, my African woman. That's my inspiration, and that's that's who I'm I'm catering this to. So even now, this year, our immediate plans forward are to, is to launch um, our skincare range because what we've been doing so far is we have a full range of makeup, color cosmetics, you know, foundation, powder, concealer, and eye makeup and lip makeup. What, we had, what we've been doing so far is se sending them to other brands to get their skincare, which is the moisturizers and the cleansers and that type of thing. We have to have our own so that we keep it all in within the brand. So that's our immediate way forward. And then just like two or three products that our, our customer is really asking for. So fortunately, again, I am readily available to my immediate client, to, to the end user. She can tell me. She emails me. She calls me. They tell me, I want this. We need this. How come we don't have this? So I can directly cater to her. And that's one of the biggest selling points of Suzy Beauty as well, right? And obviously, your partnership with Flame Tree has helped, especially in the expansion. So, can you just brief us a bit more about how they've helped you increase your distribution and what other countries you're planning to launch into? So, so with Flame Tree, so I work directly. Like uh, um, Harold is um, Harold Bangara, he's the CEO, and his wife Sonia is my uh, immediate. I call her my sidekick because <laughs> we we work so closely together. So you know, every day it's like, okay, so we need to create more, you know, fresher displays for the for the shops that we're in. We need to cre uh, to get further distribution. So we we go around. We we were like, you know, I had so many plans before that I could not execute just because of um, 
uh, the lack of you know it's 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 between funding it's between capacity it's you know it's it's a few things that we just weren't were not able to do with with what we had and now with you know i guess i keep saying a strong the stronger backbone and 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 um and a stronger help by our side we can now we've gone to all the all the malls that i had on my list that we would need to enter all you know uh, upcoming malls are now even calling us um we can go. I can go. I go with them. We negotiate. We and and also like also keeping. Every, we, thankfully, we have um the same principles. We have the same you know um the same ideas in in mind. So we're not going to go and and, and do something crazy. Uh, you know, aside from each other, we are we are we're, we're together in this. So now we are. We we've actually signed on with a few new malls. Distribution is really important. Um, We've, we've been with the same partners for a long time. Some of them are increasing their distributorship, so we're growing with them. Others were like, you know, maybe maybe we don't need to be there. Maybe we need to be somewhere else. So it's it's a lot of strategy. It's a lot of planning and, and in the right way. We've made it uh, all the past few years have been a lot of trial and error, especially Suzy Beauty being a pioneer in the market. There's nothing and there's no benchmark to, to um, go up against. So yeah, so we now we now we're able to start to strategize properly and 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 increase our distribution and increase the things properly. You mentioned that you were the pioneer in creating a cosmetic brand that was local in Kenya, but yeah. ever since then, how has the Kenyan industry with regards to cosmetics changed? So there's still a lot of um, international brands coming in, which for me everyone's like, "Oh, but like, you know, isn't that isn't that horrible for you?" I'm like, "No, the more the merrier." I think there's space for all of us. For me, the competition, all, uh, all the competition does for me is prove my point. What, what have we done? We've created a great quality, affordable product created for the African woman. Nobody else claims that. So when they come in, they don't, you know, they have different color ranges. They have different textures. They have different price points. And that, that's what they are doing. That's what they've done for decades. And, and so it just, it reinforces Suzy Beauty's everything. Everything that we claim, everything that we promise is reinforced by the competition, I feel like. Um, so yes, and, and I f- a few local brands have cropped up here and there. We don't really directly compete with them. You know, they're not in the outlets that we're in. A bunch of the international brands that we sit with in the department stores or in the in the beauty shops we can compete with in terms of quality to some extent i think ours is better than theirs of course but um, but the price like price points we we always we're always um uh, superior because oh, we we literally have a great great quality product that is really really affordable so whereby our immediate competition um let's say my my foundation is 1,000 shillings, theirs is at least two or 2,500 shillings. So everything is double and more. So it's, yeah, so it's, it's a great, it's a good space that we're in. Okay. Um, for any makeup artist that's just starting out as a professional, what advice would you give them in order to make it big? And I heard that you have a school for people that want to learn how to do makeup. How can they get involved in that as well? Yeah, so so we we had we had um, we've done a few years of our our training program, um, which was really popular. Now with the transition into the new into the uh, with with our acquisition and stuff, something like that that type of thing is on hold. But we're we're going to re- re- revisit that in in a month or two. Uh, we've trained a lot of amazing students. They all work in the field right now, and and they they're all flourishing. My very first protege um, is is probably the enough, the top makeup artist in the industry right now, and and so so it's it's like um, if you if you are planning to be a makeup artist, first of all, make sure that you love everything about makeup. You can eat, live, and breathe it all day, every day, because it's there's nothing easy about it, right? You have to break into the industry. You have to get the correct clients. It's very frust- There's so many frustrating things about it, and um, I have I have many friends who still just like work as makeup artists in the industry, and it's down to like oh you know you have to work crazy hours, you have to wake up at four in the morning, you have to go to sleep at eleven o'clock at night, 
you have to wait for your payment for three months. Like it's it's crazy, and you have to like still just deal with all that and and uh, like make a, a set clientele that's going to keep on calling you for the jobs, because now everyone thinks they can wake up in the morning and decide to be a makeup artist. So um, you have to you have to state your claim, like your status, and and you you know you know you've done this for a long time. You know you you've honed your craft. You know you've practiced under. Uh, a professional. I think that's really important, and that's what I did in my years. Like, yes, yeah, so I was trained by some big companies, Clinique and Mac, but I spent a lot of time just working for free, doing a lot of free jobs just to hone my skill. Working under a professional who does, you know, New York Fashion Week or LA Fashion Week, and learning what she does behind the scenes, and then you know, uh, learning it for myself. So, you know, you, you you have to understand that you're not going to, you know, wake up in the morning, decide you're a makeup artist, you know, you have to invest in, in, in the industry, in, in, the, in your profession, build your kit, have great product, learn under great professionals, because there's, now there's many, now there's quite a few, and that are doing really, really well and doing really great work. Just watching what's going on in the industry for me is so exciting every day. There's so many, first of all, fashion events, beauty events, expos, all this stuff going on where we can go and showcase our work. And you see the work that's out there the mag- in the magazines and like the, all this. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful to watch. And, and you know, there's a one or two that are like, oh, what, oh, that person is not a professional and they should not be claiming to be a professional. Yeah. But for the most part, it's just progress, 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 progress. So um, new makeup artists, make sure you invest in your profession. Learn at a professional, you know, beauty school or whatever, or apprentice, apprentice under a professional who's working in the industry because practice makes perfect. And when you're there doing it every day, honing your skill, um, I have an inter- you, uh, you talked about my training school. Yes, we have the training school, which for, uh, you know we'll, we graduate uh, professionals. They go work in the industry. I personally uh, have a, an internship program, but it's, it's very very difficult to enter. <laughs> um, I, I'm on the third um, leg of it now, so it's like I get like three four interns, train 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 them. They come with me, work under me. I I personally you know speak with them all the time like they learn a lot um from and for, I you know I speak of my early days I speak of you know today and they see you know so much about the industry that you can't you can't just learn from a school so um I I I hand pick those and uh, you know like to to get 3 or 4 I interview about 30 or 40 people wow yeah, so the, right now I have my five, my five interns that I, I meet with a few times a week. We train, the, we, they go on the jobs, they do our incredible work. Um, I, the, they're handpicked because I look for the passion. And then there's an innate ability. Like somebody can decide that they want to be a makeup artist, but you actually just can't do it. <laughs> yeah. So that innate ability that I can't teach has to be there. And then, uh, yeah, that the passion and that that's all I look for, and 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 then the willingness to learn. From there, everything else I can teach, and I do teach. So yeah, this is the third the third uh, batch of them, and soon I don't know they'll they'll be spreading their wings, and that's that's actually part of me uh, contributing to the industry. Right. There are a few videos I've seen on YouTube where I have these girls that put makeup on themselves and do different styles, and they're quite popular. Some of them actually get millions of views. So yes. I, I'm not sure where these girls learn how to do this, but some of them end up being uh, sponsored by some of these cosmetic brands, and they earn a living from just YouTube. Yes, yes, which is amazing in itself, right? So th- you know what? It's that, in- that innate ability, like you're born with the skill. And then, like, some of them learn from YouTube only, right? They learn from just, like, watching professionals. They learn from, so just, like, and, and they, 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 they um, invest in it. They invest the time. They invest, invest the effort. And it pays off. At the, for, the, for the most part, it will pay off in the end. When you have your own business, it's not yeah. like a 9-to-5 job. It's, it's a 24-hour job. 
Oh, and absolutely. You obviously have to strike a balance between work and family. So how is it? How do you achieve that balance? Um, uh, yeah, that's a that's a, a constant battle <laughs> because I have two boys who are six and three years old. So just like you know, it's not like they can take care of themselves. And I, I have this problem where, you know, we live in we 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 live in Kenya. Like we can get nannies and people to take care of them, but I insist on doing most of the stuff for them. So yeah, it's a constant. Every day, all day, so many things. <laughs> uh, wake up in the, at 6.30 in the morning, pack their lunches, feed them breakfast, get them ready for school. They go off to school, I start working. Um, fortunately, in my, uh, my current situation, I, uh, I, I, I go to the office maybe two, three times a week. The rest of the time, I work out of home. I, I have to go like visit the stores. I have to go, you know, do my mentorships, do my trainings, like so all sorts of things. So they don't expect me to to be in the office nine to five, Monday to Friday, which is great. Um, I go ma- mainly for catch up meetings with my team and with my partners, and and strategize, and then go out there and do the thing. So I can I plan my my timetable. I plan my meetings. I plan everything around the rest of my life. So you know, if it's about picking a child up at 3 p.m., I will be available at that time. If it's about you know cooking, I I I also insist on cooking. Like so, and it's very much home and office is like the same thing <laughs> for me. And Susie Beauty, I always say, is like one of my children. So if it's Sending an email at 1 a.m. I'm sending an email at 1 a.m. You know, um, yeah. So I, I don't sleep very much, <laughs> uh, and I, I yeah I work 24/7. I keep saying I'm like you know me going you know flying to somewhere to do a thing. I consider that work. Uh, me being in Valley Arcade, walking around, talking to, uh, networking with people. I consider that working. So. I'm working all the time, but it's also, you know, all for the for the greater good and for you know for what I'm what I'm trying to make this brand be. Right, and as you've mentioned, the business is like a child because in its in its infant stage, it needs all your attention. But as yes. a business owner, it's your job to actually raise it up to become a business that can carry itself. Basically, it does not need your support any longer as it grows and develops, just like an ordinary child would. Yes, yes, yes. And fortunately, I have a really great team with me. Like so, so um, after the acquisition, so the Flame Tree Group took me on uh, to be in charge of the brand and chief creative and, and brand ambassador. And then uh, the t- my team came along with me because we know what we've done. We we know how we built the brand. We know what works, what doesn't work. So I really needed my amazing little strong team with me. So they, they, yeah, they're, they're there. They're there, you know, they know what, they know the old Susie Beauty story. They know the new Susie Beauty story. We're trying to bring it all together and take everything to the next level together. Right. And when you're not running around with the family or the business, what do you do to wind down and relax? So I have my, I have a few girlfriends who I'll, you know, I'll meet once in a while and we'll just like wind down together and have a glass of wine, you know. Um, and then um, I like my trash TV <laughs> or my <laughs> silly little novels that I'll sit and read just to escape. It's, I call it escapism. I love to cook. I find that for me is like almost therapeutic. Um, so like I'll cl- literally close the kitchen doors and, and spend like an hour of the day just like you know, creating a meal for the, for the kids, for myself, for my husband. <laughs> And yeah, it's it's just like that type of thing. I'm I'm really a home board. Like being at home is really my 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 favorite place to be. So yeah, that's my that's my regrouping, my wind down. And then we love to travel. We travel as much as we possibly can, which is not as much as I want it to be. And whenever we, even if we travel for business, we try and take a few days off and. You know, learn a place, like have an experience. Like uh, I was in Mumbai last month. Oh. Uh, my husband recently just whisked me off to Zanzibar just to take some time off because since since this whole acquisition and stuff, we haven't really taken a break. 
so we we definitely needed to to unwind um we'll be in dubai next month in april i'll do a speaking but still we'll take a few days off and and see dubai i've never been there you know so yeah traveling is also really super fun for me well um it, since you watch a lot of tv one show I'd recommend it's actually not on tv it's on youtube i discovered oh. it last week actually it's called an african city have you heard of it no it's a, it's a Ghanaian show it's a, uh, was created by this lady called nicole that okay. wanted to to share an experience of how she as a lady who's Ghanaian from the diaspora mm. struggled to settle into a crowd with the dating and the culture and that whole thing of her identity is she american is she Ghanaian oh and so God. it's about it's like sex in the city but african i think i have heard of it yes it's called an african city yes yes it's really funny yes, i enjoyed I it need to look it up <laughs> right so awesome. what's your best failure ever in other words, what's an experience whereby you failed and the lesson you learned was one that you couldn't have gotten otherwise? Yeah, I think that's a uh, um definitely with the partnerships that we've had, like, you know, we've had like different investors, different partners that have never just like worked out and you learn I've le- it couldn't have happened unless I was with them, right? The the lessons so that's why like even this partnership with the flame tree group like i was so stuck on it has to be the right partnership it can't just be anyone anymore because that's what it's been so yeah those partnerships that have failed were really really important and um yes and a, a big part of the Suzy Beauty story what's one of the reasons as to why they fail is it one of those whereby they clearly have something that you need but the chemistry between the two of you simply wouldn't work that's a billion percent right that's right. exactly it the alignment we, I, I keep saying alignment is a very simple word but a very important word you're not aligned you don't think the same you're never going to agree it's never going to be the same the same um outcome or the same uh, requirements or the same interest level all that like so you know those are like uh thank thank god they happen right this is the final question if you were cast away to a desert island what yes. movie would you take with you what book would you take with you and what song would you take with you well okay so movie so I I have I have a few favorite movies like of all time like I mean like movies that were made in the 90s. <laughs> um I think I would take this is going to be strange but like maybe The Sound of Music. Oh. It just makes me very happy. <laughs> and I can watch it over and over and over again. Um book it would have to be do you know like a a, a very like mind numbing novel like something by Jackie Collins <laughs> okay <laughs> like just like it's so out there and so uh, something i cannot relate to that i can just like escape my mind can just go to another place that i don't even understand and that's what jackie collins novels do to me um and a song it would have to have to be a song by either beyonce or by prince those are my two favorite artists of all time and i can tell you right now what i'm playing over and over again is okay. Beyonce's new song formation like i i can listen to it all day and night <laughs> um prince maybe like when doves cry i can listen to that all day and night also so yeah so you can choose you can choose for me between these two all right that does it for the interview but how can people learn more about suzy beauty on social media or a website and for people in uganda like myself where can we find your products so in you know we have we had a distributor in Kampala just like a guy called Anthony like he would just order our products and and distribute to salons and beauty shops but he's kind of gone quiet so I'm going to uh, revisit that and and uh, I'll, I'll let you know we have an online shop a fully fledged online shop www.suzybeauty.com if you go on there you can see every single product every single color you can order we can do, we can uh, ship and then we yeah our website is you know uh, fully active our uh, facebook page is super super active suzy beauty our twitter is also suzy beauty everything is suzy beauty all right and the show notes page will actually be businessmike.com/suzybeauty so everything indeed will be suzy beauty fantastic uh, 
Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. It's a public holiday today, so I appreciate you taking the time out to yeah. share this. Um, thank you. Thank you also for listening. <laughs> All right. Thanks again, Susie, and we wish you the very best. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to the Business Mike podcast. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you'd like to listen to more episodes just like this one, simply go to businessmike.com. I would love to hear from you. So if you've got any questions or feedback, you can reach me on Twitter at Daudi Mugabe, on Facebook at Business Mike, or email that's Daudi at businessmike.com. Don't forget, we have a brand new episode every Monday. And until then, take care.